Cheers. Welcome today to a brand new video. I wanted to get this done last year, but it just wasn't in the cards. With the changing of the world and our season getting cut a little bit short, um, it's getting done now. This is stuff I wanted to do last year, but it, it's going to get done now. We started last year with this M8 by doing that kind of like lift kit. You see the green spindles in the front there. There's videos on that. Uh, it'll all be in a playlist. But we started with that, and that's not where I wanted to stop, but that's where we ended up quitting. So for those of you asking, what sled am I going to be riding this year? Why not a new sled? Because that's all I have the money for. <laughs> yes, one more year on the old white sled. One more year. It's always one more year. So what are we doing today? We are finally doing the headlight delete kit. Um, and I've had a lot of questions on this one. Uh, what parts you need to do it. Uh, the way I did it, I did it back in that 2017 Mountain Cat I had. Um, it's going to be the exact same process on this one. It won't be any different. Um, so let's get into it. I will be starting by showing you the parts you need here. Um, there's going to be a little bit of changing things up as I go through them. But this will work on any M8 from 2012 to 2017, as well as any XF800 uh, from 2012 to 2017. And the, what are they? The, uh, the 800Rs? No. X800s? I forget what they're called. What are they called? The other 800, the, uh, the track 800s. Uh, this will work for them as well. This will not work on 1100 turbos. I want to point that out because the, the intake system on those is very different. So we're going to start and we're going to get this done today. And the most common thing I get asked on this kit, because I haven't done it for a number of years, is what parts you need to do it. I did not have the part numbers on hand. I do now. So we will go through our parts and then we will take the hood off and we will be going through the entire install process because you can do this kit for what am I into it here? 20, another 20, probably another 10. I don't know, like 60, 70 bucks or something like that. And the reason I made it for that um, uh, green M8, that Mount Cat that I had, is because I didn't like any of the kits on the market, especially for the price. So I kind of just went and made my own. So let's get this headlight delete kit done on this white M8 here. That's right, let's spice up this white M8 to just make it a little more uh, presentable, clean it up a little bit for another year of riding. These are all the parts we are going to be using. Some of these parts we actually will not be using. Um, for example, this is actually the um, two and a half inch OD PVC pipe that I used originally. And I don't think I'm going to be using that again and for the reason, the reason for that um, is that I can actually get a little more breathability out of a two and a half inch uh, OD exhaust fitting. Um, so you can see there, a little bit more breathing room, which will help with our airflow a little bit. And they are the same, uh, same outer diameter. So likely we will be using this. We will have to cut it. So this is what I used last time. This is what I'm going to be using this time and we will just get rid of that as well as these are actually just little clamps from u joints likely i'll be using something different and we'll we'll get to that when the time comes because these will actually be for remounting your gauge i'm not sure if i'm actually going to use these or go through my parts bin and kind of make something else uh work this will be kind of something that you may have to play with this is actually we'll be using that for the gauge mount over here, that's just a little clamp that we're going to be using just to wrangle wires, clean them up a little bit. And here onto the part that I get asked most about. So these are the frog skins that we're going to be using for one of the pods. There is the part number. So they are the three inch OD, two inch ID. So the uh, inside diameter, that is the part that actually breathes. And the outer diameter is the overall diameter of the frog skin. This is a two pack. Um, and we will be using that for one of the intake ports. There is your part number. I'll add all these part numbers down in the uh, description so you can make sure that you get them right. But that is what it is. This is just a uh, sock that uh, sheds snow. And this is our unit filter. This is what the filter pod will be. We are not going to be oiling or greasing this filter at all in any way like it recommends. Um, this is actually the snow pod anyway and it is the angled so again to fit this uh the two and a half inch 
outer diameter, we have the two and a half inch inner diameter because of this fitting on the bottom, it will have to go around that. So that is what we are using here. Just a unifilter, same thing I used as last time. And I forgot to mention at the time, this is the light we will be using. So we will start on our M8 here. We will start by removing the hood and getting the headlights out. That is the first step. And if you don't know how to do that, I will show you. And then we will get right on to installing this kit. Okay, hood is out, ready to be worked on. We're gonna start by taking off the windshield and the gauge and the gauge mount, just to give us a little bit more room to work. And then we will be removing our headlights um, as well as our intake. Pretty easy stuff, just the T20 screws and the T30s holding this on. And then we will take our intake off and I will show you how to do that. All right, so we have the gauge unplugged. We have our 12 volt connection unplugged. Now these are two different size uh, connections. So make sure if you decide to go hook this up again that you get them on the right polarity. Uh, I don't think they'll actually physically fit backwards. We also unplugged our ignition. So we got that out. And now for this shroud, this intake and the headlights, there's actually only one screw on each side holding this whole thing in. And then there's uh, kind of these hook clips. And a lot of people struggle with this part, but I'll show you how to make it easy. So these are the last two screws holding everything on here. This last part is kind of the trick because all the hardware is removed. The uh, gauge is unplugged and removed. The connections up there are all unplugged. Now to get the shroud off, so it hooks in right there. All you want to do really is push in this piece of plastic and push down on the whole hood. And it just unhooks like that. All right, we are in the inner workings of our hood here uh, in the headlight assembly. So right away, I'm going to point this out is that I have a air temp sensor relocate kit. So this looks a little bit different in here is what you'd normally be looking at. I have a video on that. Uh, good time to do it if you um, are doing this. Good time to relocate that sensor to the air box. I got a video on that. I'll leave it up here. Just a couple more screws. We'll have the headlight and the wiring harness assembly out, and we will be remounting it all a little bit differently. Is our um, six light LED little light bar. I used a different one last time. I'm gonna try this one out. Um, all we're going to be doing is taking this and we're gonna be putting it right about here. I have to see how far this windshield comes down first. And then from there, we will do the mounting and wiring on this, but I want to get that uh, windshield mounted up first. Now that we have everything off, again, this looks different um, as it will on yours because I did the air temp sense relocate kit. I definitely recommend doing that if you're gonna be doing this, um, this headlight delete. It'll give you a more accurate reading of your air temp sensor because it gets relocated from here all the way down into the air box right in front of the throttle bodies. Gives you a more accurate reading. Um, so at this point, you can choose what side you would like your uh, you'd like your pod to be on. I'm gonna put mine on the left, but if you want to put yours on the right, you can put yours on the right. So take out the little rubber boots. This kit, the way I kind of been doing it is that you can completely reverse this. So if you find you don't like this kit, this headlight delete kit, you don't have to buy a new uh, hood shroud or anything because you had to cut into it. You can just simply install the old parts. So what we're gonna be doing here now is we're gonna cut this to the size we need it. And then we will have to do a little bit of trimming just to make it fit right. But um, yeah, we're going to be sticking this right in here. It'll be a nice snug fit. Um, I'm gonna put my pod on the left and on the right side, we're going to be using one of these to just cover up this intake pod. So we'll get it cleaned up and I'll get this cut to size and we will find out um, how long this has to be to fit in there. Let me explain everything we just did there. So we have our fitting that we made, cut it, ended up being about, uh, you know, 
inch and a quarter ish. And then I actually beveled these edges and that'll just make it a little easier to get it inside um, our orifice. I did have to enlarge it a little bit and that was the difference between using the PVC pipe like we did last time and uh, using this. This actually is a little bit wider so I did have to enlarge this. However, it is still the same uh, or close enough to the same size that if you wanted to go back to your stock configuration, you could maybe throw in a little silicone, uh, help it out, but we're not worried about that right now. When you go to enlarge this, if this, like there's different ways you can do this. This is the way I choose to do it. You also wanna make sure if you're gonna uh, be enlarging that, make sure you blow out your air box real good so that you don't get any shavings into your motor after you start this. So here we go. We want to make sure that when you get that sized right, you wanna make sure that's actually a snug fit. Like you don't want that to be loose, like that'll that'll hold by itself easily. Um, we are going to also be adding some adhesive and then we will be siliconing around it. Last time I used, uh, I actually just used super glue and that worked great. I think I might use a different adhesive this time, but uh, yeah, that's nice and snug, which is good. That's exactly what we want. And we just have to uh, put it in so that we want this filter to be flush with the body and it's going to sit you know just about like that after we get it in this time i did this i actually used um super glue but because i want to make this a little more of a permanent setup i'm actually going to use jb weld this time around going to wait till that weld sets up a little bit this is a very crucial part we really want to make sure we get this part right because after this weld sets up we are going to be putting a bead of silicone over that but um we'll, we'll give that some time to set up and then what we're going to want to actually try to do is try to pull it out because this is a very critical um this is a very critical piece to the whole operation so we don't want this joint falling out so after this sets up before we silicone it we're gonna try to pull it out um, just by hand. So if you can pull it out by hand, that's an issue. So we wanna make sure that this fitting is not going to come out because that is critical to what's happening here. While that is getting all set up and ready, open up our brand new pack of frog skins here. And we will actually only be using one of these. So you will have a spare one. You may choose to um, mount the spare one somewhere else on your air box just to help out your airflow a little bit. I didn't need it on my mountain cat, so I'm not expecting we're gonna need it on this. I'm gonna get this side cleaned up nicely so we can be ready to apply our frog skin. We will need to cut your frog skin just a little bit because this little lip at the bottom, it doesn't quite make it. So you can cut off the logo or do whatever. I'm probably just gonna cant mine like that. Um, but before we peel off any backing or anything, we're gonna wanna take a chunk out of the bottom because then you can size it up before sticking it and uh, make that flat spot right where it needs to be. So the only thing here you are gonna wanna do is just make sure that you're leaving enough of that tacky material. Make sure you still have some of this lip on the bottom that you can still actually uh, stick it to the, uh, the intake there before taking off any stickers, cutting it to size. And right there, that's a nice fit. Nice thing is if you screw this up, you got a second. And there you go, that's how that's supposed to look. So now that we have this fitting installed, we use the JB Weld, we tested it out. We really wanna make sure that that fitting is not gonna come off, which it is not. So the last thing we're gonna do with this piece before we mount up our pod and get the snow charger on it is we are going to run a bead of silicone just around the edge and just make sure we got a perfect seal there. So that's what that fitting will look like when it's done. It's both epoxied and then we ran our bead of silicone just around it just to make sure that we're getting a good seal. So we're gonna give that a break, let that silicone set up. Uh, like this will be last anyway. Oh, here is our light. I have that mounted. I'm gonna clean up a couple of these little areas uh, just a little bit. 
but uh, I actually used the existing um, two existing screws here that were in the hood because they matched the uh, discs on the mounts perfectly. So we have the light on and next we are going to work on our windshield uh, slash gauge assembly, which I already have done. So I'll show you that. This will be our new um, windshield setup right here. Uh, the only thing we really have to do here is use those brackets I was talking about. This is where this mount would usually sit, but uh, I had to use these little brackets. And again, I'm going to clean them up once I'm done. Um, but you have to lift this gauge basically up uh, a couple inches or an inch even, because otherwise this plug will be hitting the hood prior to you actually being able to get the wiring harness uh, plugged in. So that's why we need to do that. And all I did there was I just used a little extensions just to move the mount point from here to there. And that just lifts the gauge up a little bit. And you can also articulate it and we'll move it around a little bit. And that's basically all you have to do. Uh, that's basically all you have to do there. Pretty, pretty easy. You just need to find little brackets that'll work for you. And for me, they happen to be old U-joint clamps. So um, just a couple little pieces of hardware. And there you go. This will be our new uh, assembly here for our uh, gauge pod and our windshield. Now here, this is our original hood shrouding and intake. Um, I have taken out the 12 volt plug and the ignition and the key. And this is something we are completely done with now. You may choose to uh, leave your ignition out entirely. If you unplug it, you don't actually need it. You can just run off your uh, kill switch. And basically, if you have a tether, I, I re definitely recommend doing this if you have a tether. Um, your tether will then basically become your new key. Uh, I am going to actually run the ignition, I think. So all I'm going to do is just plug it in to the factory socket and these are going to get tucked up somewhere and you may choose to use the key or you may choose not to use the key and same with this i'm just gonna plug it in and because i do use my 12 volt plug sometimes so put that in upside down i do use my 12 volt plug sometimes so i'm going to just leave that on board even if it's not like in a handy to reach spot it's still still nice to have sometimes hood or your windshield rather is actually going to be the part that hides all your wiring all your wiring is going to be basically just stuck up underneath the windshield and you won't see it so this is a pretty easy mount up as far as things go um one thing i will say before throwing that on is all i did was here I drilled a couple th holes through these um, stock headlight mounts. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with that 2017 Mountain Cat. Is I'm just going to use some of the uh, places on this uh, hood mount. This windshield mount, I should say. That uh, allow me to zip tie onto it. So we will need... We will need this plug here free and I will show you something we'll do with that and you will need to if you haven't done your relocate for your air temp sense this uh, blue plug that will need to be plugged in in your stock sensor uh, mine runs somewhere else so I just bring it up from under my sled and I just plug it in um, along with the stock wiring harness which is the the big one here so these are for headlights uh, 12 volt plug, ignition, main, uh, and another headlight. This is what your hood will start to look like when it's done. I gotta take that decal off since that's in the, uh, the wrong spot now. But uh, here is what your gauge pod will start to look like. Now you can do whatever you want here. I just put my ignition here and then I just put my 12 volt plug here. They're just zip tied. Um, if you want to design like a cool bracket that you think can mount all these things, go for it. 
Um, I'm just going to do it that way because I, like I said, I've done it for a year. I know it works. So that's just how I'm going to rock it again. All right. So that's looking, that's looking not too bad. We're going to do some more cleanup and stuff there, but, uh, moving right along here. Now we're just going to double check this connection and make sure that it is not going to be moving, that it's actually fixed in there, which it is freaking pulling the hood apart here. And now we're going to put on our, uh, air filter here. This filter will come with one of these stickers that says, warning, uh, failure to oil properly will result in serious engine damage. Don't worry about that. We're using this for a sled. We are not oiling this filter. Do not oil this filter. So the reason I use one of these filters actually is because it's got a spring inside of it. So it holds its shape, but you can roll it through the snow. You can roll it, get it unstuck or whatever. That thing is just going to change shape and flex and not tear off and lastly we have our snow charger because this uh unifilter is useless without this thing we put the knn on the outside so everyone knows how freaking cool we are and there you have it there is our intake that will also shed the snow now we're done with the hood install, right? This is our headlight delete kit. Haha, <laughs> done wrong. We still need to do a few things. We need to clean up the wires. We need to wire up the headlight. Uh, but for now, let's pop it on and see what it looks like. The hood is not fully installed yet. This is what it looks like right now. So we're starting to get closer to that uh, desired look for the machine. I wanted to get this all done last year but um, wasn't able to, or just didn't, because we weren't doing any more riding, so I thought maybe I'd save it for this year. That decal really <laughs> looks strange, tucked under the uh, the LED light like that, but uh, we're not done. The hood's not fully installed yet. There's still, there's still more to be done. We still gotta clean some things up. Next, we are going to wire up our lights. Now, this is pretty easy. All you have to do is find, this is one of the headlight connector harnesses, and this is our uh, LED that we will be wiring in to one of those harnesses. Um, all we need really is a couple of these little blade connector terminals. Yeah, these little blade terminals that we're going to be using will plug right into our uh, headlight terminal. So, all we have to do now is um, just put them on our LED light. So this is our headlight connection terminal. We have three wires going behind it. One's ground, one's high beam, one's low beam. I happen to know I've already done the testing. So our black is going to be our ground and then our blue is going to be our high beam. So obviously we're not gonna leave it over the hood like that, but uh, these terminals just plug right into that. And all I'll do is just feed this in behind and then I will plug in the terminals so that they are um, behind the hood. So now when you are all done, you will get something that looks kind of like this. And I did a few more things up here and I will show you those real quick. This is that clamp that I was talking about in the beginning. Just helps wrangle the wires a little bit because the new wiring harness connection actually sits uh, sits up behind there now. And this little clamp just kind of helps wrangle things. This is a cord that you may not have because it is for this air temp sensor. And I just wrangled that in so it can plug in. It actually plugs in almost right behind the ignition. And yeah, that is really about it. Needs a little bit of cleaning up, but besides that, it's uh it's not too bad it's kind of the end result i know it looks a little goofy with that decal under the light but um this is what you're gonna kind of end up with Alright everybody, that is it for today's video. 
Um, I hope that clears up mostly what I did on that other cat because I did pretty much the exact same thing to this one. Uh, the lighting is a little bit different, but there's a few things I want to note before we get finished up here. Um, I also, in addition to running one of these LEDs, I run a helmet light um, in these circumstances because uh, that LED, yes, it works, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra light. It's not going to be quite as good as an OEM headlight. Uh, the other thing is you lose your goggle bag. So if that is something that you're using all the time, then maybe the headlight delete kit isn't the way to go for you because you lose that goggle bag um, heater. So you can't have your spare goggles staying warm unless you move them somewhere else, which um, could be an option too. But thanks everybody for watching today's video. If you like this video, if you have any additional questions, leave them down in the comments. I will try to answer them, but I think I pretty much cleared everything up. Again, it is kind of a DIY kit. Uh, you can certainly go with the BDX hood and spend four or five, six times what I spent on this, even more probably, because I'm only into this for less than a hundred bucks. So that could be the way. If you want to go that way, go that way. But this is how I've done it. And I've rode it for a whole season with this exact same configuration. And I never had a single problem with it. So I think that's it. I'm done for today, but I'm not done with this sled yet. Uh, hopefully another video in a couple days because I have more to do. Uh, thanks everybody for watching today's video. If you like this video, tons more videos in the end screen here that you can go check out. Patreon links, uh, sponsor links, partnership links, all down there below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Super important. Sledding season is pretty much here. I mean, look outside. Look outside. Look at all the snow. It looks just white. You can't see it anyway. It's heaven. Uh, thanks everybody for watching today's video and we'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye everybody.